As I've spoken about many, many times right here on my YouTube channel, Google Ads has drastically changed the way it operates, especially around its keyword match types. Now in this video, I'm not gonna go into another in-depth analysis of how Google has changed its keywords match types. And if you stick around to this end of this video, I will share some links so you can go through and watch those teaching videos where I go into detail the exact changes of what's happening with how the keyword match types operate. But just in case you're not aware, the main difference has been is that Google has switched over from a keyword targeting over to a meaning or intent targeting. And what I mean by that is previously or historically, when you used exact match keywords, Google would target those exact keywords that you've got in your keyword, like the name suggests, and they would also have to be in that exact order. Whereas now, Google puts its own meaning or its own intent so that it's not just the keywords which you've targeted, it's also the meaning of those keywords. So what that basically means, and all you really need to know is that it is a lot more broader. So previously when you'd set exact match keywords, you knew exactly what keywords or user search terms were gonna trigger your ads. Now you don't know as much because it's, as I said, it's a lot broader and it can trigger a lot more variations of keywords. Now, this is not necessarily a bad thing. What it just means is it means that you have to go about changing your structure and your strategies. And this is the biggest thing that I'm seeing in Google Ads right now is that people are still pushing these old strategies which just don't work anymore. And these are things like single keyword ad groups or SCAGs, also things like setting up campaigns without a custom goal. These are things which just do not work anymore more. And the reason for that is because Google is now putting that intent and that meaning in base. So for success with Google Ads, you do really need to leverage off the data that Google has. And Google has so much data. And it's fast incorporating more and more of its underlying AI technology into Google Ads. So you are crazy if you're not leveraging off this data. And let's be honest, there's no way that you can know all of the different data points that Google also has. Now, I'm not saying that you just give Google free reign. You do need to definitely put some checks and some structure in there. But what I'm saying is that you do need to engage a different campaign strategy than what you were previously doing two or three years ago. So what I wanna do right now is I wanna give you an inside look of how I go about and structure my ad groups, especially for search campaigns, because when I'm reviewing accounts, I'm seeing these same issues time and time again. But before we get into that screen share, just in case we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young, I'm from Define Digital Academy, and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. And I'm passionate about helping you see the highest levels of success with Google Ads. And to help you, what I wanna give you access to is my Google Ads optimization checklist. Now this is amazing for search campaigns and it lets you know exactly all of the different actions that you need to carry out when you're optimizing your search campaigns and it even takes it a step further and lets you know how often you need to optimize the actions. So whether you need to complete it every 72 hours, every week, every month, or every 90 days. And if you'd like to get a free copy of my optimization checklist, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. But right now, let's go into that screen share so I can give you an inside view of how I structure my Google Ads search campaigns, especially the ad groups within those campaigns. Now, I will let you know that this is gonna be a bit of a longer screen share, but I encourage you to stick with it because it's gonna be so highly valuable for your business. So let's jump into that screen share right now. So what I'm showing you here is an account that is based on multiple search campaigns. And what you're looking at here is you're looking at a comparison of the first three months of 2023 versus the last three months. Now, the reason for why I'm showing you this is that I took on this account in sort of October, November last year. And you can see over that first three month period, we're able to heavily improve their cost per conversion. So we were able to decrease their total cost per lead by about 30%. We also saw an increase in their click-through ratio. And you can see at this time, we actually increased their spending while also increasing their number of conversions. Remember, while bringing down that cost per conversion by that 30%. And what I did in this account in that they already had multiple different campaigns. Now, these campaigns were pretty much all the same, but the difference was is they're based on different countries and there were some different 
regulations and also some different focuses. So that was a really good structure that the client already had in place. But when we went into their ad groups, I saw what the issue was straight away and where we could make some massive improvements. And what the issue was is that they were still very much using single keyword ad groups. So they had eight different ad groups in each campaign. And these were based around the different themes of you know like investment, property, flat, real estate. And I paused these four ad groups. And the reason why I did that is that I merged these into the ones up here. And the reason why I did this is we were seeing trends where keyword groupings around about apartment were also triggering ads for flat. And then we also saw things like off plan was also triggering ads like real estate. And the reason for that is because once again, Google had assigned the same keyword meaning. So what that meant is we did not need as many ad groups. And this was the core change that we made. So what I'd really, really encourage you is that you need to go through and have a look at your search terms. And if you see any of these ad groups which are triggering the same keywords, what you need to do is you need to merge them into one. And as you can see, you can be quite aggressive with it. I took this down from eight ad groups down to four ad groups, remembering that this was the catalyst for us really seeing that huge decrease in that cost per conversion. And then it allowed us to increase the spending while also increasing those conversions. Once again, at that lower cost per conversion. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take you into one of these individual ad groups. And what I wanna show you is that you can actually see here in that we have one broad match keyword, and then we have a collection of phrase match keywords. And these are keywords which we've been building out. And we actually at the moment have 43 different keyword phrases. Now that may seem like a lot, but let me show you why this is so important. And it's because when you go into their ads, we use something which is called dynamic keyword insertion. And I'll just show you how that works in here. And what dynamic keyword insertion does is that as the name suggests, it dynamically inserts the keyword into your ad. Now I've pinned this into the first headline. So what you can see through here is regardless of what keyword triggers the ad, it appears in this first line. Now, the way that you set that in, if you wanted to use that for your own campaign, you just need to type in that squiggly bracket or that brace. It brings up the option for keyword insertion and then you add your keyword in there and click apply. But now you can see why it's so important to add in all these extra phrase match and they can even be exact match keywords because regardless of what keyword the user uses, they're going to see that search keyword in the the headline of their ad. Because one of the biggest misunderstandings with this dynamic keyword insertion is that people think that it's the actual user search term which they used, when in fact, what it actually is, it's the keyword that was triggered. So by having more keywords in your ad group, it allows that dynamic keyword insertion to be far more effective. So when it comes to structuring your ad groups in 2023, the core principle of what you want is that you want less ad groups with more keywords. And as you can see in the example that I showed you, we halved the number of ad groups. So we went from eight ad groups down to four ad groups. And then we really built out a, an exhaustive list of different keywords. And as you can see, we had up to 43 different keywords, remembering that we had one broad match and then all the rest being those phrase or exact match. And the reason for why that is so beneficial is because when you are using dynamic keyword insertion, it then increases your chances of the user seeing the keyword phrase or a really close variant of the keyword phrase that they used to trigger your ads. So I know that would have been highly beneficial for you and really giving you a behind the scenes look of how I'm seeing success with my search campaigns in 2023. Now, before you go, remember, if you wanna know exactly how to optimize your search campaigns and the strategies that are working right now, Remember to follow that link in the description below to get free access to my Google Ads optimization checklist. And as promised at the start of this video, if you wanna know more about the changes, especially around keywords that have been made in 2023, go through and watch this video right here. Once again, thank you for joining me. See you next time.